Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present today. And again, thank you for the Brain Tumor Charity for uh, supporting this. It's uh, obviously an extremely important uh, endeavor. Our mission, um, just gonna get you guys off my screen. Okay. Uh, Anatroy Bio is the name of this company that I'm uh, president and uh, founding CEO of. And I couldn't be more excited to talk to you about our mission and our products. Our mission is to disrupt the treatment of brain cancer as you heard about already today. And that we are doing by transforming access to the blood brain barrier. A little bit about our, uh, the blood brain barrier. The problem with the blood brain barrier has been the holy grail of neurosurgeons like myself, as well as any uh, person that is interested in treating any, really any disorder of the brain. And as you can see here in this picture, the blood brain barrier is the gate that separates the blood from the tissue of the brain. Here you can see delineated in a neuron. And now this may be good if you get bit by a boa constrictor because the poison may not get into your brain, but if you have something like a brain cancer or a stroke or some other problem in your brain, the blood brain barrier prevents systemic treatments from getting into the, the brain itself. And this is a big problem when it comes to brain cancers because although we're having successes in other types of cancers, albeit breast or lung, we still can't get drugs into the brain because of the blood brain barrier. In, in fact, 98% of drug treatments for all brain disorders are unable to penetrate the blood brain barrier. So efficient delivery across this blood brain barrier is absolutely imperative in order to treat brain cancers like glioblastoma. And as you heard just now, diffuse in, intrinsic pontine glioma, which is a dead, devastating uh, uh, tumor in children. And of course, our metastatic disease, as we get improved treatments for lung, breast, and other cancers, we're seeing higher rates of metastatic brain cancer. So it's absolutely imperative to overcome the problem of traversing the blood-brain barrier. Our solution, we have the first endovascular blood-brain barrier permeability system. What does this mean? It comes in a kit that includes a microcatheter that we deploy and we have expertise deploying intra-arterially in the artery it uh, connects to a unique pump system that pumps the drug of choice that you want to get past the blood-brain barrier. We have novel therapeutics and biologics that actually can temporarily open the blood-brain barrier with a drug called macrophage inhibitory factor, and then close the blood-brain barrier, something we have not uh, been able to do in humans, uh, we now will be able to do with this blood-brain barrier permeability system. And there are a host of diseases in humans where actually you want to close the blood-brain barrier, not just open it, uh, like you do for the treatment of brain cancers. Depicted on the right is such a kit. You see a multi-port microcatheter, which is proprietary for our company, which is specific for intra-arterial drug delivery, the microinfusion pump that uh, connects to that microcatheter, and then it's connected by the nurse. And again, we have multiple drugs to open and close uh, the blood-brain barrier. We have been doing uh, blood-brain barrier delivery uh, using intra-arterial uh, techniques, and hopefully this video uh, works. Rosemary, can you see the video? I can see the video perfectly. Okay, so you can see these are microcatheters that we thread into a human, and we can go all the way up into the arteries, uh, deep, deep into the brain. And this allows us to get drugs of choice into the human brain uh, with a very selective catheterization. There you can see a hair-like catheter moving through the blood vessels deep in the human brain. So if a doctor says, I want to get a particular drug into a particular area, let's say the pons of a kid with the pontine glioma, we can do this very, very selectively. We've spent a decade worth of human experience uh, uh, doing this kind of technique and have published extensively on this technique. And we have been a leader in this blood-brain barrier uh, permeability and delivery system and have published uh, extensively on this. We... We know now and have published on both the cost and reimbursement of these delivery system. If you use these types of kits and use the artery to deliver drugs to the brain, you don't have to use as much drug as if you use oral and IV administration. This makes it very palatable from a hospital perspective. In fact, we looked at analysis of delivering drugs intravenously versus intra-arterially, and for GBM alone, we can save $500,000 per patient per year. And this is currently technology that is uh, readily reimbursed uh, by CMS and other providers. Our patent position is extremely strong. We have patent applications filed for both the novel microcatheter, which is specific for intra-arterial brain delivery, our microinfusion pump, which is specific for this microcatheter, and of course, our early stage discovery work with the open and close uh, drugs for the blood-brain barrier. 
This is work that is out of Northwell Health here in uh, New York, the largest health system uh, in New York State. What does our competitive landscape look like? We are a capital efficient company that is focused on overcoming the blood-brain barrier with uh, intra-arterial drug delivery. This has low systemic body exposure, low side effects, and high bioavailability. Uh, other companies like Armagen, who use Trojan horses, they have to use the vein intravenously. These have higher systemic side effects and low bioavailability because they are less likely to get to their source. Convection enhanced delivery modalities in, in, uh, involve putting a catheter in the human brain. This requires brain surgery with a high risk of infection, as do companies like uh, Arbor Pharmaceuticals that have the product Leodel, which leaves polymers or microchips that, microchips that require brain surgery. This is a market, as discussed uh, before, that is rapidly expanding both in North America and overseas. And the market size for blood-brain barrier uh, products is uh, exponentially increasing and should hit uh, many, many billions as our population ages uh, over the next decade. Our addressable market uh, looks to be uh, easily in the 500 million billion uh, range. If you look at the number uh, of brain cancer patients, this is U.S. population alone. It doesn't include those even larger numbers that you saw earlier. And these are U.S. Uh, incidents and prevalences. And basically, the diseases that we would open the blood-brain barrier uh, would, uh, the addressable market would approach 700 million. And diseases like multiple sclerosis, where you want to close the blood-brain barrier, have a huge uh, uh uh, applicability as well. We assume we can sell these products, this kit for at least $50,000 here in the United States, a very low manufacturing cost, yields a very high profit per unit. And even if we assume a 10% US rate of uh, uh, using this in just one time in, in a patient, and these would be used multiple times in, in many patients, we, have, <coughs> we believe we have a very good uh, valuation for our uh, kit. As mentioned previously, <coughs> excuse me, we have a very deep clinical and business experience. Our leadership team consists of both clinicians, scientists, and a very strong group of uh, business executives already. <coughs> We're seeking $5 million um, initially, $1 million for a microcatheter development, $1 million for the infusion pump that goes with it, approximately $2 million for our small biologics, and a <coughs> million dollars uh, in human capital. Uh, here's our timeline. We expect to finish that $5 million capital raise uh, by the mid uh, a year from now and then move into a secondary raise where we can uh, file for some regulatory clearance, uh, particularly of our, our microcatheters already. Uh, we expect that to be a very quick in development as we bootstrap and start getting revenue from this uh, microcatheter first. We'll move on to the pump and then the small biologics. We know that companies have already expressed interest in, in products and include uh, stroke companies like Penumbra, Boston Scientific, and uh, many device uh, companies. So with that, I'll uh, end and take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Beautiful presentation. Uh, do, do us, anyone have any questions for John? You can either uh, unmute yourself or you can put your questions in the chat box. Uh, hi, Rosemary. Uh, I have a question for John. Okay, Robert. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, John, what has been your experience uh, in going to the venture capital community for, uh, for a raise for this product, for this venture? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I will tell you this company recently uh, got off the ground as Rosemary uh, uh, has known. And um, as clinicians, um, we have actually not gone aggressively uh, out of the gate to the venture capital community. Um, we have gotten a lot of interest, um, but have not aggressively started that process as of yet. Um, we do know um, that there's very uh, there's a lot of excitement in particular about the microcatheter and the pump. Hi, this is Victor Levin. I have a question. Um, this is very interesting technology, which would have application for a number of uh, neurologic diseases. Uh, I'm not clear uh, how this would be used in the treatment of uh, brain tumors. Um, given the fact that you're going to be uh, using this through one arterial vessel, 
and tumors are fed by more than one. And in studies of intra-arterial drugs, uh, it was somewhat disappointing in terms of the drug dose to regions of the tumor at uh, uh, the edge or the infiltrative edge of the tumor. So I'm just wondering what your approach would be for brain tumors. That's a great question and, and one that I get all the, all the time. So let me just talk from a historical perspective. In the 90s and early 2000s, when people were putting catheters like Ed Dewalt in Oregon was putting uh, catheters in the carotid artery and using alkylating agents to try to get holohemispheric delivery of, of alkylating agents into brain tumors. It, what happened was the brain tumors shrunk in size because the concentration of drug was very good, but it also blinded a lot of patients and caused a lot of side effects. Our microcatheters do what radiation does. It focuses on the tumor itself and two centimeters around that tumor. And you can actually do multiple catheters, uh, multiple arteries, Victor. So we will go in, for example, we may hit the anterior cortical artery for a, a tumor that's sitting in the parahippocampal gyrus of the brain, but then use the middle cerebral artery. So we can actually go into multiple vessels during the same patient. You can go bilaterally in the same patient. So the beauty of this is our goal is to target what radiation therapy target is, which is um, the, the enhancing tumor plus two centimeters of margin. So in actuality, you can cover a lot more distance than, than perhaps I portrayed. We don't just use one vessel. We go to all feeding vessels. And as the technology and imaging improves where we can overlay MR imaging into our angiography suite, we're going to even be able to overlay the beautiful images of the tumor as it relates to its blood supply. I hope that answered your question. No, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question for John. Hi, John. Um, have you uh, gotten any feedback or interest in pursuing um, the diagnostic route as, as sort of a precursor uh, in uh, before therapy delivery, of course, there's therapy delivery, but uh, has their interest in sort of delivering um, agents uh, for MR, et cetera, and other sort of modalities through this as well? Because they have the same issue with the blood-brain barrier. So I think your question is, can this be used to, for example, uh, deliver uh, a nuclear tag or something like that for metabolic imaging? Is that correct? Right. The answer is yes, and I, I would hope that once this technology uh, gets out, which it is, when I was at Cornell, um, there was a physicist who um, had labeled some of our drugs, in fact, bevacizumab and cetuximab, with a zirconium linker so that we can see the agent as it left the artery and our microcatheters. So you can actually deliver these agents. It binds to the tumor. You take the tumor, or the patient to a uh, a CAT scan, and we can do, uh, for example, uh, FDG PET and see some of these uh, agents. So the answer is, it's really unlimited. Like the, uh, I think Victor mentioned, all the imaging of the brain, all of the modalities of, of treatment of the brain, we have this massive uh, uh, problem ahead of us that really little, few people are, are willing to undertake, which is the blood-brain barrier. I think as a company, we have the ability to do it. Uh, because we have clinical expertise, both uh, from the neuroscience perspective, and we're doing it in humans already. Um, so I can't help but think that um, this is going to have wide applicability uh, well beyond, beyond the indications I've listed on these slides. Any other questions? Uh, Rosemary, this is Daniel Arbes. I wonder whether we could uh, receive a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that uh, Dr. Brockovar just presented so that we could follow up. John? John? A hundred percent, of course. Thank you. I'm going to follow up with you offline. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm available. Um, I'm happy to, um, obviously, so we can get all the presenters uh, done, but uh, please uh, don't hesitate. I'm available 24-7. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions for John? 
John, it would be great if you could just provide a little bit of an overview of your background. Uh, sure. I'm a neurosurgeon. Um, I graduated from uh, my residency at Penn about 20 years ago. I was a faculty at Cornell uh, for 10 years where we started these technologies with actually a bunch of uh, uh, Penn neurosurgeons at Cornell. Um, we got recruited over to Northwell Health and the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research, uh, where my basic laboratory is in brain tumor biology and therapy. Uh, we uh, recently sort of, uh, I don't want to use the word purchase, but brought in Cold Spring Harm Laboratories. And, and we have a, a vast um, hospital system with, um, we touch about uh, 4 million patients per year in total. So our brain tumor volume is extremely high. We have uh, over a thousand brain tumor patients in our health system uh, actively uh, at any given period of time. So we're just blessed to have our finger on the pulse of of these type of treatments. I run intraarterial drug delivery uh, trials with uh, bevacizumab, cetuximab, carboplatin, temozolomide, and uh, Herceptin for metastatic breast cancer. And so we've lever leveraged these techniques with uh, over a decade's worth of experience to put these catheters to to get the um, the catheter, the closed pump system, so it's safe, so you don't introduce air bubbles or anything that can risk stroke in these patients um, uh, to put this kit together. So we're quite excited about it. Okay, any, any other questions? So it looks like Kate Worthington. Uh, Kate Worthington has a, has a question. There's a couple of questions in the chat box. How confident are you that the technology can be reused again, given its application to the brain? Well, I think that it's actually not so difficult or, or um, you know, as my wife likes to say, it's not brain surgery. Um, <laughs> so it's um, the technique of, for example, clot retrieval in endovascular techniques is improving every six months. So the intraarterial and, uh, and our field is moving toward the delivery of agents using the artery, not the, the vein in so many modalities. So I have no doubt that the, um, and if you want to get a drug into any part of the human body, use the artery that goes to that organ over the vein. You're going to get a much higher concentration. If you want to get a drug into the liver, use the hepatic artery. Uh, the concentrations, uh, we're delivering Y90, for example, radioactive beads uh, for metastatic liver metastasis. And uh, it's very, very successful uh, for some indications. So I have no doubt um, that this uh, uh, will work um, and it has to be exploited because as our population is aging, uh, we're going to be um, really challenged with a dearth of treatments for a host of neurological disorders. And there's another question as well. Um, given the torturous vascular of GBM, specifically, are there methods to get more dense tumor tissue? For example, would you expect a pretreatment with, with VEV to normalize vascular and allow better access? That's a great question. So one of the things that I'd like to do, um, so for example, in, 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 in thoracic uh, in lung cancer, we can stick a needle in the chest take out uh, tissue, do genetic analysis, and get a molecular array of that tissue, and then give it IV therapy. The idea of doing that in the brain is palatable, where we stick a needle in the brain, take out tissue. Let's say we see it's EGFR amplified and overexpressed. Then that patient comes back, gets intraarterial cetuximab, gets surgery with intraarterial cetuximab prior to radiation. So we know a little bit of the molecular signal at that time to give those treatments. So, um, the tortuosity of the vessel in the tumor doesn't uh, matter. Um, these are vessels that um, supply that microcapillary structure. So they're getting a very high dose of drug. And just to let you know, the first time I did this, which was 2009, um, where we use a drug called mannitol to open the blood-brain barrier, it's anxiety provoking because we're trying to open the blood-brain barrier. Um, but they're very, very well tolerated and extremely low risk are, we have been, uh, uh, a stroke rate that is far less than one in uh, 250 patients. And that stroke rate does not lead to devastating consequence. It leads to intratumoral hemorrhage, which we see in about 6% of our, our patients anyway. So um, the side effect profile is really safe. These are treatments that are happening in every single hospital. 
um, that treat stroke, which is basically almost every hospital in the United States has an endovascular uh, person doing uh, intraarterial uh, treatment of stroke. So it, this is a device, the microcatheter alone uh, could be sold to every hospital where there is a stroke um, center, which uh, just as you know, is basically proliferating faster than any other segment uh, in our space. I've got one quick question. How long do you does the blood brain barrier stay open and it, does it stay open long enough to deliver nanoparticles? And how big? Yeah, think, yeah so that's a great question. And some of this is being uh, delineated. I, I will let you know that um, Fred Lang, who's chair at MD Anderson, just opened a trial using uh, endovascular and intraarterial drug delivery with mesenchymal stem cells. And um, his uh, Delta. Um, oncolytic uh, uh, virus. Um, nanoparticles should get through the, the mannitol we know opens a blood brain barrier from anywhere between 15 minutes and two hours. MIF, um, and that's where being able to close the blood brain barrier is actually just as important as opening the blood brain barrier. So we can actually give a drug, know that the blood brain barrier stays open, whether it's for 15 minutes or two hours. Some of our infusions do take an hour or so as we do the volume slowly and then be able to come uh, back and close the blood brain barrier would be uh, particularly advantageous and safe. Any other questions for John? John, uh, I've just been following up on something here and there's a company called Denali which is looking for a similar result but with a different kind of vehicle looks like more of a chemical vehicle um, I'm always interested about what your ideas are about the potential competitors out there thanks tell me the name again Denali like the motorcycle uh, D E N A L I. Carol Ho is Alzheimer's company. It's a public company. D N L I is a ticker. Yeah. Um, I'm not aware of their. Um, I'm. Uh, you know what? I'd have to go and do quick research unless you want to educate me quickly on what their their modality is. Uh, I won't want to edge. Hold on. I won't want to educate you too quickly, but uh, no, I'm just reading an article which came up today. I was just looking for kind of potential competitors on that one. Um, yeah. So they're building a protein called an FC fragment that binds uh, to a variety of numerous drugs. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, um, it's just a different method. I think, think the more people playing, the better it is, to be honest with you. But uh, I just wondered whether or not, you know, there are other people out there uh, who might be looking at um, different approaches? Uh, yeah, sure. To... They fall. They fall into our our transport competitors, our Trojan horse competitors. It looks like um, where you're you're asking a, an agent to help get it through the blood-brain barrier, either for from some modality of transport, whether it's an insulin receptor or, or a transporter. So, you know, I frankly. Um, have found those companies to be, um, they've been around for a long time and they've just not been uh, particularly successful for a host of reasons. One, you have to give it intravenously. Two, they, they sometimes don't get to their, their target transporter mechanism. And the payload that you can deliver with these modalities may not be sufficient enough to, to actuate biological effect. So frankly, nobody uses them. Not, there's not a single hospital I've ever been at. Granted, I've been at three hospitals, Penn, Cornell, and Lenox, but no one ever talks about these drugs as being used. So no one's purchasing our competitors' products. Thank you. That's a very good answer. Now I understand the Trojan horse a bit better from your earlier part of the presentation. Thank you. 